like E5 injected? Or, or it can, where, where are you? What, what are your thoughts on that, on moving forward? Oh, well, I, I plan to be one of the first. Yeah, <laughs> that would be good. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I'm 79 years old, and <laughs> I can't wait all that long. <laughs> um, so, yes, we're, it requ would require a sufficient amount, mm. and, and that amount is, is fairly large. Uh, right. What, what we do is actually provide about four times as many exosomes as would normally be present in the young blood of an animal. So let's say there are a billion exosomes present in the entire blood of a young rat, we would inject four billion exosomes. And that would overcome the uh, the secondary effects of aging. You know those those uh, molecules, for instance. Um, Saul Valeda found that that uh, a cyto uh, a cytokine. It's not a cytokine. It's a chemokine called eotaxin. Mm. Uh, accumulated in the brain of old rats and that uh, if he injected young rats with eotoxin they would develop much the same sort of cognitive uh, impairment as as older rats do but we think that's a secondary effect we think that exosomes are the primary effect and uh this experiment with my hand mm. has, has, has made me rethink several things because for one, the exosomes only work where they were applied. Even, even here on the web of my, uh, mm -hmm. my hand, Ooh. it's hard to, okay. In the webbing of my hand, it's still somewhat wrinkled because I didn't apply the exosomes to that surface. So it seems to me that the exosomes reset a cellular clock, which then begins aging at, a, at the normal rate. And the idea that there are pro-aging substances seems to be belied by the fact that for a year, almost a year and a half, 79 year old blood has been flowing through this hand and we see no change in in aging we see no aging right. changes yeah so so this uh makes me think and i, I had a big argument with uh, with, with <laughs> editors of nature and a, a harvard professor about this and they ultimately, they, the editors agreed with me and the Harvard professor disagreed and it went through several rounds. And my what he disagreed with was that there was a clock that somehow existed in cells that uh, I, th I think this pretty much proves that there's a clock and that aging just proceeds naturally. You reset the clock to young it's like turning back from the end of the book to the beginning of the book and then you still have to proceed through it page by page mm -hmm. uh, or in the clock analogy you reset the, the clock to, to 7 a.m. And, and it proceeds at the normal rate to, to 12 p.m. To, you know to midnight mm -hmm. which we'll call mm -hmm. death <laughs> okay so human trials for e5 as an injectable i assume i mean so 
having enough E5 is one issue. But the other issue w w would also be that I think there would be a lot of um, regulatory hurdles to cross. Yes, that, that, that's, that's what would slow us down. Right. Applying it topically, however, mm, yeah, those, those regulatory hurdles uh, would be much lower. Right. And, uh, and so, yeah, so are you planning a topical E5 trial? Well, that's, that's my belief. I, I have to, to uh, hmm. it'll depend on our CEO. Right. Okay. I, personally, I, I would do that, if nothing else, just to, uh, to attract investors. Because obviously it would change the cosmetics industry, which is a fairly sizable industry, enormously. Mm -hmm. And our uh, our patent should protect us. Yeah. Yes. I, I mean, it seems like it would make sense to do that trial. And yeah, I, I mean, especially as it's, is it would be a cosmetic like the regulatory should not be that big and you right should be able to move forward and if, if you have the right results i'm sure it would do really well i'm sure it will have the right results <laughs> yeah i mean that seems um i see the evidence every day yeah <laughs> honestly every day i look at my hand i say is it changing yet <laughs> but no it hasn't Okay, I, I wish I had applied it to other areas of, of my face. Like when I go back to India, uh, we'll see. Right. So are you uh, matter are, mm -hmm. areas of my face rather, not other right. areas, and this other hand too. Yeah, so I'll have at least matched hands. <laughs> <laughs> Are you, are you manufacturing in California or India at the moment? India. Ah, okay. Right. Yeah. We we have problems with the California pigs because they're uh, they're fed uh, they're fed huge amounts with hormones and antibiotics mm -hmm. and uh, and they have a really high. Uh, lipoprotein content in their blood and lipoproteins tend to be about the same size as exosomes so we really get a dilution effect which would require much more uh, uh, many more injections to achieve the same effect right. in fact we would get about sixfold as much uh, um, lipoprotein as we do in in our indian studies actually think about the dosing ah uh, yes it, for for a human if we scaled up the dosing for humans would it be injections or or last time i think you talked about it would require like an infusion would you yeah how uh, how, how much would be required well i mean if you were to do injections uh there would be many injections, but if you were to do it by infusions, which, which shouldn't last more than an hour or so for, uh, for a week, every alternate day, that would be, that ought to be sufficient. Right. And not much of an inconvenience as compared to aging. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I, on on the kind of it's technical on the scientific side, that was what I wanted. Any anything that I missed in there? Um, I think. No, I I I don't think so. I mm -hmm. I think uh, you know, on the practical side, pigs provide enough blood to take care of aging for the human population as as it is now. On the technical side, it may be exosomes, but it also might be ectosomes, exomeres, supermeres, etc. And that's that's what we'll find out through uh, 
experiments that I hope are starting any moment now. Uh, the, uh, right at the moment, the 21 hour trip to India doesn't, 21 in air hours mm -hmm. to India doesn't really appeal to me. But uh, um, I was, if, no. if necessary, I'll go there. We, we have our, our scientists in India. Yes. Uh, yeah, I was, I was going to ask. So you don't actually have a plan to go there at the moment. Uh, I would like to go there. We'll have to see. Right. We'll have to see. Uh, so if so, you, so far, I trust the people there. Sorry. Right. Yeah. No. No. I, that's so. If you had to, if you could, had to guess when you think. You know, we would. Uh, I guess there were, when when would there be human trials for E five injectable? Do, do you have any idea how long that kind well, of timeline? We're we're thinking of dog trials first, at least in terms of safety. Right. Uh, and we could begin phase one trials. I'd say within uh, within a year or two. Mm -hmm. And those would basically be safety trials, but I think they would reveal a lot more than just safety. Right. <laughs> and so, uh, yeah. and I would gladly be part of that. <laughs> right. That would be, yes. Um, and okay, so you are planning dog trials. Would these be companion dogs or? No, I, no. I these, these are, uh, uh, through a CRO, a, a right. contract research organization. So we we'd want third party trials, right? Uh, yeah, and uh, and they generally use beagles. I don't know why. I I like beagles. Uh, <laughs> I have like a dog beagles. myself. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and of course, let's face it, uh, having a dog myself, I realized there would be a, a huge market for, for, uh, for pets as well. Yeah. If you, if you could have a dog that, uh, that could live 30 years, people would be fairly happy about that. Yeah. I mean, it seems like it would be a good way to both move forward with the testing and, and proof and also get revenue. Yes, exactly. Yeah. I mean, re revenue is not my major concern, except revenue to perform the research that needs to be performed. Um, yeah. I mean, that's the thing. Everything's always easier with money. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Otherwise, I'm quite happy sitting here in my room with my books and uh, mm -hmm. or working in a laboratory. And it would be a lot easier if I were uh, several decades younger. <laughs> uh.